Welcome back again guys and girls to another one of our usual love videos over the past few weeks or months it appears these videos have been highly requested by you all and that's why we're on a journey to cover every single couple in Naruto and Boruto series. This couple may be unlikely and hasn't had the time to develop as much as usual with every single couple in Naruto. It's one of them ones right, you know, you think it's love at first sight, Kiba having love at first sight, who would have thought? Plus, we've barely seen this character or even this couple in Boruto. I feel like we really do need to see what they're up to ever since the blank period and maybe Kijimoto or an assistant is gonna cover it in a Shinden but maybe Kiba's so useless and so unpopular they didn't bother doing it because they didn't see it making money. So today's video will be based upon the couple that hasn't been exposed at all since the last few filler episodes in Naruto Shippuden and that is how Kiba and Tamaki had fallen in love where they are now and where are they now? I mean where are they? We haven't seen them. I know that you guys are a bit clueless and I am on this topic because we literally haven't seen Kiba at all only maybe once or twice in the whole 40 episodes of Boruto even Rock Lee has had more screen time than Kiba so as always we'll be going balls deep in Akumaru <laughs> jokes aside we'll be diving straight into the relationship of Kiba and Tamaki and what have they done ever since the blank period and in Boruto whether they had a child or not so let's go Although Kiba hasn't gained the same attention as he did during Naruto within Boruto, he still has a hell of a lot of popularity. I mean this guy is the king of memes, everyone loves roasting this dude. Even I still see Kiba as, you know, he might be a strong shinobi compared to some guys but I still think Boruto can probably kick his ass by now. But Akumaru is older and maybe deadly, you know, them two being together is a combination, I don't know but Kiba is pretty useless. However, what we want to understand is how Kiba had gained a sudden love interest during the blank period. This wasn't built up like anyone else's, you know, during their childhood such as Naruto and Hinata, you know, Sasuke and Sakura and then Shikamaru and Tamari. So his love interest is much odd than the rest, I mean even Sai, goddamn Sai, the most awkward guy had bagged one of the hottest chicks in the whole of Naruto, Sai deserves a freaking reward guys that is one hot tick. Anyways, after the full shinobi war right, Kiba had become that one friend that always chats shit. My guy must have gone through the whole of Konoha claiming that he beat Kaguya with just Akamaru. <laughs> Like Kiba's that type of guy to play a hero but once he confronts the big man he'll get knocked out in like 2 seconds. Remember when Sasuke came to the wall and he declared he wanted to be Hokage and then Kiba comes out of nowhere oh, I'm the Hokage I want shut your mouth bitch no one asks for your opinion bitch sit down son like I don't even know why he did that <laughs> so Okay guys, enough with roasting Kiba right, we've got to understand how in the world did Kiba land such a beauty out of nowhere. Kiba is seriously the luckiest guy to brace the shinobi universe because Kiba's love life was so out of the blue to be fair, I expected that we didn't really deserve to have any information about this guy because he's so useless right? <laughs> but he goes on to marry and just seeing him in Boruto would have been actually kind of refreshing to see him but in Boruto he has a wife and we were like whoa what the flip did happen here? Kijimoto had created the Book of Thunder, the beast marked by love. And you guys have guessed it, this Shinden was based on the one and only loneliest shinobi, Kiba. And I'm surprised this hairy bastard was able to find someone that goes to show that anything is possible guys. So moving on, Kijimoto had just enough energy left to bother with Kiba's relationship as during the blank period, he had come across a smiling Tamaki on the top of the steps with holding a cat, you know, a cat was in her hands, right? And you know, Akumaru with Kiba, you know, you know, bing baga boom, that all makes sense. So I know this scenario seems a bit cliche, but you know, check this clip out of how they first met in the filler episodes of the anime. <laughs> 
かあなたたちうちのモモを追いかけてあの人病の使い手か気をつけろキバ赤丸へえモモって言うんですか<笑>奇遇ですねうちの犬も赤丸っつうんですよ It states within the Book of Wonder that Kiba smiled back and started to blush, but when he was going to take a step towards her, Akamaru grabbed him from behind and pulled him away. Kiba and Tamaki seemed to have interest in each other, but Akamaru did not approve of the relationship. Akamaru was like, Bitch, get off your filthy ass out of head.、Uh, you know, Akamaru, you know, saying, Kiba, my bitch, no new bitch coming into our lives. So, Akumaru must have felt like you know, he was a third wheel at this point. So, he sensed that a hole from a mile away with his nose. And <laughs> I'm such a troll. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I'm trolling. So, so, anyways, right, during the first meeting, it was built up to the idea of them eventually ending up together. So, that the Shinden was a smart idea through Kijimoto for him to progress the relationship further in the period that no one knew nothing about what was going on. So, he did this to carry it out towards Boruto for them to end up being married. So, now we'll be going further into the filler episode, and it had been revealed within Naruto Shippuden based upon Naruto and Hinata's wedding day. It was known that Tomaki had recently moved to Konoha during the blank period stage as she was going to meet her relatives in the village. Coincidentally, Kiba and Shino were in the same path as she was for them to have a gift in place for Naruto and Hinata's wedding. The sudden intrusion has startled Kiba, Shino, and Akamaru. However, it was too late for Kiba. He was as whipped as ice cream, mate. He is one thirsty guy, and let me tell you that because he was all up in her face. No holds barred, fam. Just look at this scene. Upon meeting his so called true love, he then proceeded to do what he does best, and that is chatting shit. He must have told her that he was going to be the seventh Hokage, which is probably how Kiba managed to get the chick. I know that none of you guys are surprised because Kiba is the mastermind at making you believe his bullshit, but I guess without him lying most of the time, I don't think he would have made it this far in Naruto and, you know, not being killed off like Seneji. <laughs> In this episode, Kiba and Shino's main objective is to find the beekeeper and gain the rare honey from him. However, she warns them both that it is more than dangerous to go out there due to the obstacle being the fogged bamboo forest, right? But as always, Kiba does the chat no shit no jutsu and he came into full effect and re he reassured her by acting as though he was the shit and I'm gonna mess things up, guys, I'm powerful. So then Kijimoto must have felt so damn sorry for Kiba for him to go through all this pain and his, him being irrelevant all the time. He gave him a wife because it feels as though, yeah, Tomaki just took, a, took the deal with this bullshit. He took, she took the deal with this bullshit. And then, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what happened, yeah. I bet they married, married life is like how his mom treats him. I don't get how, what happened. I don't get how these, these two ended up together. Just watch this scene. <laughs> Before we go any further on their married life, we don't really understand much of Tomaki or where she came from, so as your number one anime fact channel, we will let you in on what we know, right? 
Tomaki wasn't a character that had been suddenly introduced in the series. However, she was part of Naruto more than you think, as she was involved in a filler episode of Naruto in episode 121. It was shown that Team 7 was assigned to collect the last paw print for the poor encyclopedia, which she brought to her grandmother. Also, she and her grandmother helped Team 7 by lending them the cat is to sneak into Cat Fortress of Nikimata. So I don't know if this episode's canon now, it seems to be because she's a canon character now in Boruto. So anyways, we've got much more spicy and saucy information on her and that is she used to have a crush on Sasuke Uchiha. Now I'll be damned, I don't know anyone that doesn't have a crush on Sasuke and especially you Yaoi fans out there. However, this later changed throughout the series. She finally played a big part for herself and that was when Itachi Uchiha and Team Taka were pursuing Itachi and it was at the time she had helped Jugo with his outfit. This short appearance was also a big one in terms of her being involved with Kiba as Kijimoto must have dug deep into his archives to find a loophole for him to eventually find someone and settle down. Anyways, Jugo's clothing was decided by Tamaki because she had told her grandmother to just wrap him in a curtain and to be honest Tomaki was a very kind heart person for anyone even Jugo being the deaf machine that she is she still helped him out so I guess she was in a few episodes here and there <笑>もう、ナルト君たら、お酒あんまり強くないのに。へえ。まあ、他家の椅子はこの俺様が譲ってやったようなもんだけどな。候補にも入ってなかったお前が譲るというのは不可解だ。<笑> Kiba in Boruto is honestly being turned into a myth at this point. We are 40 episodes deep in Boruto and now we've only seen this hairy fuck once or twice. Regardless of the couple being exploited in Boruto series, we are treated with a little chapter appearance by the two during the epilogue towards the Boruto movie. It is a scene that much more mature Kiba and Tamaki smiling at each other having a conversation alongside uh, you know a more aged Akamaru. She laughs at Kiba when he tries to call to him and he blatantly ignores him but they now have many cats and dogs at their home. But what do you guys won't believe right is that Kiba has given up on his pursuit of becoming Hokage. Who would have thought that would happen? And you know, he doesn't want to actually be a shinobi anymore. But you know, Kiba now works as a TV promoter and a movie star. The news of technology in Boruto has advanced so much since Naruto's days that Kiba can now take advantage of it and he started making a living off it. So okay, we've kind of come to the conclusion of this question, you know, does Kiba have a kid in Boruto? A lot of people are associating Wasabi Izuno, the girl that looks like a cat and a dog at the same time to be their daughter within the Boruto series. However, it hasn't been stated in any Boruto data books that, you know, there may be any sort of blood relationship, no interviews either. Because Kijimoto hasn't really confirmed it, we are kind of baffled on why Wasabi Izuno and who her parents are because she resembles Kiba and Tomaki quite a bit. But because there hasn't been any confirmation yet, we, you know, I'm not gonna say in this video that's his daughter, but maybe she's from the same clan, same bloodline as Kiba? We may not be sure, it's possible. In Boruto, they're kind of trolling at this point, everyone has a kid. So if you know, if they do introduce their parents much earlier or later on, you will find out. Anyways guys, this was more of a troll video to be honest. And now you know that Kiba's married and he busts some nuts, he went deep inside, he went balls deep, all these things. And now he doesn't want to be Hokage anymore. He barely gets any screen time anymore. And they probably realise he's not popular enough and he doesn't make them money. So fuck this guy, get him out of the show. And they made him a movie star and he doesn't really want to be a ninja anymore. Anyway, it's interesting, you know, to talk about these things. Let me know in the comment section below any video ideas that you guys have. Do you think this girl is the daughter of Kiba? And make sure to smash the notification bell, hit the like button, follow us on social media, and we love you guys, and see you next time.